Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Flask app that uses Celery to render. So this is going to have four different parts to it. It's going to have the Flask app, the Celery part, a Redis instance, and also a Postgres database. So I'll show you how to set all this up on render. And just know that if you wanna follow this video, you do need to pay render for the background workers. So the web service, the Postgres database, and the Redis instance are all free for the smallest instances of those. But for the background worker, it's $7 a month. So if you are okay with that, you can follow this video. If not, then it still may be educational just in case you wanna to deploy to render in the future. And if you need help with deploying your app for any reason after watching this video, like maybe you get stuck on something or you have a special case, you can work with me one-on-one -on -one so I can help you solve whatever problems you're having. You can go to prettyprintit.com slash coaching or the link in the description below to learn more on how you can work with me directly. So with all that said, let me first show you the app that's running. So here, uh, it's very simple. I made this in a video earlier this year. So I have this uh, route here, create user and I'll just pass in a name for add user, Anthony here, and it says task started, and we see it's just counting up uh, zero to uh, nine, I believe, and then it adds it to the database. And I also have the ability to cancel a running task. So I wanna deploy this to render. So the first thing I wanna do on render is I want to create a database. So locally, I'm using a SQLite database, but I wanna use a Postgres database on render. So what I'll do is I'll just click new PostgreSQL. I'll call this uh, Flask Celery Postgres. And then I'll let the database name and user be generated for me. I'll keep it as organ. I'll leave 15 as the version number. I don't need an API key here. And for the instance type, I'm going to set it to be free. So I'll create this database and this is going to create. While that works, let me go ahead and create a Redis instance as well. So I'll click new here. I'll go down to Redis and I'll call this Flask Celery Redis. I'll leave it as organ once again. I'll leave the default for the max memory policy and I'll click free for the instance type and I'll create this. Okay, so those two things are being created. It looks like the Redis is already ready, but the database is still being created. So let me go back to the code. And one thing that I'm going to need to do is use environment variables for the location of the database and Redis. So we see here in my configuration, I have like the uh, database reference here in the code and also the Redis instance. So I need to change these to be environment variables so I can put those values on render so the app knows where to look for the database in the Redis instance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import OS up here at the top import OS, and I'm going to change this to be OS environ.git, and this will be database URL. So I'll create this environment variable on render, and of course, locally, I could do the same thing, but since I'm focusing on render, I'll just create it on render. And then for the Redis instance, it's gonna be OS environ git, and this will be Redis URL. And since the broker and the result backend are the same in my example here, I'll just put it twice. So I have two environment variables. Uh, one is being used twice and then the database URL here. So with all this done, I want to create a git repo. So git init, and I want to create a git ignore. So I have this tool called uh, Gibo, I think it's pronounced, and it allows me to generate a git ignore for like Python or any other language. So I can do like Gibo, Python, and then dot git ignore. And actually it's Gibo dump, thinking about it. So dump Python, and then inside the git ignore, I already have a bunch of stuff that is Python specific, so I don't have to add it myself. And then what I'll do is I'll add everything and then I'll commit this. I'll say first commit. And the reason why I'm doing this is because render will take my Git repo and use that to deploy my code. And every time I push to the repo, it will redeploy my code. So I created the repo. Let me go on GitHub and I'll call this Flask Celery Render as the uh, repo name. I'll make this private and I'll create the repository. And then down here for an existing repository, I'll just copy this command, git remote add origin, I'll add that. And then I can do git push origin master, and it should be on GitHub now. So yeah, all of my code is now here. So let's go back to the render dashboard and it looks like uh, my database and my Redis instance are both ready. So what I wanna do with these two things is I want to create environment variables for them. So I have two different parts of my app that require 
these environment variables. So one will be the Flask app and the other will be the Celery service. So I can have them share the same configuration through these environment groups here. So I'll create an environment group and I'll give it a name. So I'll call this Flask Celery Render ENV. And then I can add the environment variables that I want. So the first one is I'll set the Python version and I'll have this be Python 3.11.4. Next, I'll set the database URL, and I'll have to get that in a second, and then the Redis URL. So what I'll do is I'll open up a new tab, and I will get those values. So let's go to Redis first, and then connect, and then in internal connection, I just need to copy the string and paste it here in the Redis URL part. And then I'll do the same thing for the database. So for Postgres here, I'll go to connect internal connection. I'll copy to clipboard. I'll paste that in there and I'll create the environment group. And now that I have the database connection, I wanna take the external one, so I'll copy that, and I'll go over to my app, and inside the Docker Compose, what I can do is for the environment for web, so that's my Flask app, I can set the database URL to be this value. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna do create all so I can generate the tables in the new database. So the tables are already in my SQLite database, but I need to add them in my render database. So what I'll do is I'll do docker compose run web bash, and then flask shell in here. And I see I have an issue here and that's because I don't have the Postgres driver. Uh, so what I can do is in the Docker file. Yeah, I, I'm just listing the requirements out directly. So I can do psycho pg2 binary. And then I can rebuild everything. So Docker compose up dash dash build. And it's going to rebuild my container to have this database driver in it. So this will just take a moment. Okay. And we see it's giving me an error for the celery part. That's because I didn't put the database URL in the celery environment. I don't really need it for this particular example, but I'll just put it here anyway. So the database URL goes there. So I'll stop the Docker compose from running and then I'll do Docker compose run web bash again. And then I can go into flask shell again. And actually I see a tiny error here. So when you have these database URLs, it needs to have QL on the end. So Postgres QL instead of just Postgres. Not quite sure why, but that's the way that they want to do it. So I'll start it again and then Flask shell. This time it should work. And then I can just do DB create all. And now that that's done, the table should be on the render database. So that should be it for my code here. I actually wanna go back to my environment group and put the Q and L on the database URL part. So just QL there and save that. And that should be enough. So I believe I can close this. I'm done with the database. I'm done with GitHub. And now I want to create the services for both the Flask app and the Celery app. Okay, so to create the Flask app, let's go to web service and build and deploy from Git repo. And, and I'll select Flask Celery Render, the one I just created. And I'll give this a name, uh, Flask Celery Flask. And then the branch is master. The runtime here should be Python 3. The build command, I don't have requirements, so I need to uh, generate that file. And then also I'm not using G unicorn. So what I'll do here is I will create a requirements.txt. So requirements.txt. And I'll take the requirements from the Docker compose file. And I'll just put them in here. So Flask, Celery, Redis, Flask SQL Alchemy, Flask WTF, and Psycho PG2 binary. And also I want to add G unicorn here. So I'll just save this, added requirements, and then I'll push to GitHub. And now with G Unicorn, I can reference the app here. So it's gonna be run app, and it's going to install the requirements. I'll set this to free. And then for the advanced, 
it does not let me select the environment group here. So what I'll do is I'll create it and then I'll select the environment group once it's created. So yeah, it's starting. Now I can go over to environment and down here, I want to link the environment group that I created. So I'll just click link here. And now we see the same environment variables are in here. So now this should be deploying. So let's take a look. And this failed build is from the old Python version because I didn't put the environment group there. So I'll just redeploy latest commit and it should be deploying. So while that's running, I'm going to create the background service now. So I'll go to background worker. So this is for Celery. So same thing, build and deploy from a repo, the same repo, Flask Celery Render. I'll call this Flask Celery Celery, just to keep the name kind of consistent. The runtime is going to be Python 3. The build is going to be pip install requirements.txt, but the start command will no longer be gunicorn. It is now going to be something for Celery. So I have this in my Docker Compose, and we see it here. So Celery-A run Celery Worker. So it's the same one that you would use locally. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add concurrency equals one. So that way it only runs one task at a time. So because I'm using the cheapest one, I don't want to run out of memory if I use the default setting. I believe it gives you like 16 as a default. So I just want one uh, as an example here because I'm using the, uh, the smallest instance here. So I can create this. I can go back to the Flask one. We see it says it's deploying. And now this is building. I need to do the environment thing again here. So I'll select Flask Celery Render ENV. I'll link this. And then I'll have to do a manual deploy. And now just need to wait for this to finish. So starting service with GUnicorn run app. Service is live. If I go to the link, I should get like not found for this page, but then I can go to like slash create user. And then I have that form that I had on localhost. So now I just need to wait for the celery one to finish. So let's just wait for this. And then uh, once it's ready, I'll be able to test it. Okay, so we see the build has been successful and now it's deploying. We see it's live and now we have the celery output. Okay, so we should be able to test this now. So I'll add a user, Anthony, click add user. It says the task is started. And now here in Celery, let's see if it displays properly. So right now, nothing's appearing. Let me see if I need the other log, because that was the log for the deploy. So let me go to logs here. And it's the same one. So let's see. Here in my logs, I see post create user with no issues. So let's just see. So the Redis instance looks to be correct. Uh, but nothing is appearing. Let me just refresh just to make sure, make sure there's no delay in the logs appearing. And yeah, there was like a little delay. So here we see the zero through nine and we see the task uh, project tasks add user. And then we see the done down here at the end. So that's basically it. That's all you have to do to deploy your service to render. So we have four parts for our entire app. And as you can see on render, it's pretty easy to do. So there's actually an even easier way of doing this called blueprints on render. But the reason why I didn't cover that in this video is because I feel like you need to understand how these parts work individually first before you can create the blueprints. And creating blueprints is kind of like creating Docker compose files where you just type out like what your infrastructure will be and then render will take that file and then generate all of the services for you instead of you having to go and manually create each one. So I may make a video on that in the future, but for this video, I wanted to cover like the manual process so you can understand what's going on. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.